In this demonstration, we'll demonstrate how to install the GroupWise Ascot Windows Client from a Samba share on our Linux server. During the installation on Linux, the Windows Client was installed to the software distribution directory of the Linux server, so we can access that for installation. So what we need to do is create a Samba share on our Linux server. So I'm on our Linux server. I'll run yast. What we'll need to do is go to our network services and select Samba server. And what we'll do is we will add a new share. We'll call it GW client is the share name. It's a directory and the path will be in our software distribution directory. So we have our mail software client Windows Win32 directory. That's where we'll find our setup file for the installation. We'll give it a share description of share for GW client installs. And we'll make it read only so nobody has access to it. And we'll select OK. We'll finish that off. That will actually mount the share at this point. I've also gone and created a local user called GW client as well. And we'll use that as the login for the share. So I'm going to open up a terminal window. And what we do need to do is give the GW client account a Samba password. So I'm just going to become root of the terminal. And then once we're there, it's SMB password. SMB password, dash A to add the user, and the user's name, so GW client. It's going to ask for a password, so we'll put our super funky Novell password in. And that establishes the share. I'll now navigate over to our Windows XP box, and we'll actually create and want to mount a mapping to that share point. So I'll just open up my computer. We'll go to Tools, Map a Network Drive. We'll give it a drive letter of G for GroupWise. And we're going to attempt to connect to uh, the share. Again, our server name is DA-ZCM, and our share name was GW Client. And we're also going to say connect using a different user. We'll also not have it reconnect at login, so use a different name. Again, our username was GW Client. And again, it has the same super funky Novell password. And then we'll finish. And that will connect to our share. And now we have our share open to us. And now everybody has now access to the setup file. So we'll just get access to our setup.exe. And from here, we'll just launch the setup.exe. Select Run. And walk through the installation. I can actually close the share window. Close my computer. And we'll wait for the installation to commence in the background. Again, you'll notice the new branding, the new logo, the new colorings. And now we're ready for installation. Again, the installation will either be a typical or a custom. If we select custom, we'll see the choices that we have. If we select typical, uh, there really is no choices that we can make other than default install. If we look at custom, it will show us what those default installs are. It will do languages, software uh, integrations, and the internet browser mail integration as well. The default languages we commence with English, so it was English. We have multi languages available to us. Whether we want or do not want software integrations for document management, we can turn that feature off of the client. Uh, we'll just use the defaults. So this is what the default would be if we selected a typical. Select next. Uh, if you're doing a custom install, again, it does select and ask you which program folder group you'd like to create it in. If you do a typical, it does not. It automatically selects these ones for you. So we'll just use the defaults again, Novell GroupWise for the program folder. And it will add an icon to the desktop and to the quick launcher down in the left corner. Select Next. And now it's ready for the install. Select Install. And it will install the Microsoft MAPI client, Windows Messaging, and whatever else it needs, .NET Framework and a couple of other services, and then the installation will complete. This will take a few moments.
we'll shortly see a file copying status on the screen. Here we go. Once we get about three quarters of the way through it, we will notice the icon will disappear on the left hand side and we'll see an icon on the quick launcher bar as well. And there they go. So you again notice the new icon and the new icon in the launcher window as well. Let's wait for the install to complete. The installation is now complete. I can either choose to launch the program or finish. We're just going to finish off the installation at this point. Uh, prior to launching the client, I am going to select the GroupWise icon and look at its properties. I do want to add a switch to the GroupWise executable slash at u dash question mark which would always bring up the login dialog box every time you attempted to log in. And I'll do the same on the quick launcher bar with that icon as well, slash at u dash question mark. Click OK. And now I'll run GroupWise clients. Notice again the new branding that appeared. Uh, we see that branding in the background. And I'll log in with credentials, super funky novel password, and the IP address of our server. Default port will apply at 1677. And then we get the new client. So from first look, the look and feel has not changed in terms of look of the client. Let's just go to the help about group wise. We'll notice again uh, the coloring of the branding. It's our versioning uh, and it's a beta. The build number and all of the relevant information. At this point we're ready to create a new mail. Just test the system out. We'll select new mail. We'll open the address book and we'll see all, all the users in the address book. So we'll select all of them. We'll just deselect my account. Select two. We'll click OK. And we'll just give a initial welcome to GroupWise Ascot. And welcome and send that off. If I look at my sent items, we'll see that the message has been delivered to the recipients. This concludes the installation of the GroupWise Ascot client on Windows through Asamba Share.